Hello everyone! Rick and Ryan are at it again. It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly, just Slightly, Warped Podcast. And I am Rick, joined, as always, with Big Show. Big Show. I'm I'm medium show today, man. Just just medium show? (laughs) Just medium show today. (laughs) Well, you know, Uh, we like to have fun on the podcast and everything, but... uh, this episode, we 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 gonna get a little real with everybody. We are gonna get a little more serious. Um, but uh, I don't have much in the way of news to open the show today, though. But I want to talk to you about uh, a famous celebrity in the news that I've been reading a lot of, and I want your take on it. Um, I, I, and I forget which article or articles it came from, but uh, a lot of talk has been coming out about The Rock and how this has been a quote unquote down year for him. Uh, the XS, the XFL, for those who speak English, um, has lost 60 million. He didn't have quite the box office draw with Black Adam that he wanted. And, um, uh, some other business ventures are not uh, taking off the way they should for a man of his stature. And I want to ask you, despite the setbacks, he still had some successes this year. Do you think it's really been a down year for The Rock? What were his successes? Well, I mean, in the same vein that you can say Black Adam didn't make a hundred million dollars, well, it might have made seventy or eighty million. So he still turned a profit. Um, um, it depends how much it costs to make the film. That's true. But the XFL, look at that too. Yeah, they probably took a financial hit this year. But if they stick to it and they build the brand, they can flip the script over the next couple of years and at least come up a little bit better than breaking even. I mean, I thought. The XFL did better than that. So hearing that they lost that much money, I'm actually surprised. However, I'm not shocked if that makes sense. Um, I'm going to be honest. The USFL and the XFL, they're not going to last. Only because the NFL has made it to be a year-round sport. The way they cover their their league. And it is just so difficult to compete. And yes, the first couple weeks of the XFL were great because everybody's coming off of their football fix. You know, Super Bowl was over, everything good. But then, you know, for a long life happens and you start doing the things that you don't do in the wintertime because football's on. And, you know, uh, the football's not great to watch either. I mean, it's it's not it's not professional. It's semi pro. Um. So that doesn't surprise me. I don't think they will last. I think I think it's too long. I mean, because like USFL is going right now, and they're going to go up all the way up into training camp and preseason. So theoretically, this entire year, we're going to have an entire year of football. But those two generic leagues aren't really going to work. They're too long, 10 weeks. Um, now, if they did something like, the worst NFL team had to play the best USFL team and whoever won that game was now part of the NFL. That would be kind of awesome to watch. You know, let's say, you know, like the St. Louis, whatever their name is in XFL, you know, had to play. Who was the worst team this year in the NFL? I will Uh, say. Who was the number one pick? It was the Texans, Texans, I thought. Yeah. And you play them, and if they win, then St. Louis is back in the NFL, and Houston's now in the XFL for another year. You know, that type of thing. That would be funny, but that would be uh, great. You know, t- but other than that, I, I, I mean, if the Rock had a bad year, the man's still a multi-millionaire. So who really cares? I couldn't agree more. 
Now, before we jump off, too, though, I also want to initiate today. This is a sad day in sports TV. Shannon Sharp officially has left Undisputed with Skip Bayless. Today was his last show. And uh, so, you know, it's the end of an era. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what's next with Shannon. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if you're a big Undisputed fan like I was. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely um, going to be different. I don't know who they're going to who they're going to put in there to debate with Skip, but we're we see. we did see this coming the day after Shannon got back from uh his hiatus uh right after the um injury to the Buffalo Bills defensive player. So we we saw Lamar this Hamlin. coming. Yeah. I mean, as soon as yeah, and I, Skip got into it and they normally argue, but this was this was not a was, difference of opinion. This was visceral that and then there was also the one where they were arguing about tom brady and basically skip told shannon that he was jealous of tom brady's career because he's still playing you know like belittling what shannon sharps did in the nfl oh i didn't i didn't hear about that one. wow oh yeah that was yeah like i when shannon sharp put his glasses down i thought he was about to stand up and punch skip like that was as close as skip had to to, to getting it, the life strangled out of him on live tv yeah, here's my thing, and, and and don't get me wrong, I like Skip too. He's got some good opinions, even though he's got some stinkers every now and then. You should never tell an athlete what they are, or what they aren't, if you haven't played the game. Exactly. And Skip hasn't played one down, not one, not played a down, not coached a down in any sport. I mean, I think he played high school basketball, maybe. But, I think we've all played high school basketball. If that's um, the case, ESPN better hire me right now on the spot, right? Uh, but I, if you know, if you, for those people that are watching, if if you like to watch just good arguments, you know, YouTube Shannon Sharp and 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 Skip, or even just YouTube people that disagree with Skip on air, because like he got back to when he was on ESPN and he had a, they had like a whole week's monologue argument between him and, and uh, Jalen Rose from yeah. the Fab Five. So. Man. Um, fun fact. My wife watches the Bayless family more than uh, I do. She's a big fan of, is it uh, Top Shelf? Top Chef? Excuse me, Top Chef. Rick Bayless, the twin brother of Skip, is one of the cooks that's regularly on there. Oh, he has a twin brother? Yes, a twin brother named uh, Rick Bayless. And uh, Rick is oh, a cook. Mercy. So you've got a five-star chef on one side of the family and a sports, uh, whatever he is, prognosticator on the other side. Thanksgiving dinners must be fun there. <laughs> right? If they actually talk. Because... <laughs> I'm telling you, Skip Bayless is an idiot. So that's true. Now, I will say this. Shannon ain't going to be hurting for money. He's still got the podcast, Club Shay Shay, and he's got some other ventures going on. So you can check him out still. Um, I think the podcast, Club Shay Shay, is on YouTube. If it's not, you can at least listen to the feed on your podcast yeah, channel of choice. I think they're talking about, I don't know if FS1 is going to pick it up, but... He's he's in the process of doing something. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, and, and because he didn't just up and quit, it was an amicable leaving of FS1. I'm pretty sure that he's not done with them. He's just done with Skip. Yeah, he actually had Fox Sports, FS1, buy his contract out. Okay. So, yeah, we have not seen the last of Shay Shay. Oh, no. Or Skip, unfortunately. Yeah. I but wonder who he's going to be arguing with next week. I digress. Tomorrow. I wonder who he's going to be arguing tomorrow, with tomorrow. You're right. You're right. Tomorrow. All right. So going to our main topic, um, I want to talk about faith. Um, specifically. The singer or? No. <laughs> keeping the faith. Um, gotcha. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Save that one for another time, though. Pocket that one for another time. Um, but, you know, 
our faith in our world around us. Um, serving God and serving God over man. See, I told y'all we was going to get deep today and we going to do this. Um, but not just in a general topic, I want to break it down into subtopics. So where I want to start show, um, the obstacles that we face in our very homes when it comes to testing our faith, what are some of the obstacles that you faced? We don't have enough show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on what part of the house you're talking about. I mean, um, you know, being that leader for the family, you know, to by example, and that's that's extremely difficult to do. Um, well, yeah, let, let's start there, wow. because a, a good example is, you know, somebody in the neighborhood pisses you off and you want to just like rip the damn head off. But you have to be the face of the family, the head of the family. You got to do the right thing. I'm, yeah, Am that's I doing the right experience. Th yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, that's doing the right thing, but I don't think that's like defining your faith. You know what I mean? That's just like not going to jail. <laughs> you well, know what I, I mean? think I think it could go hand in hand because if you want to live a godly life, moments. Yeah, if you want to live a godly life and you want to show your family, especially your children, a good example, then you will bite your tongue. And you will do the right thing because you want to set that example. And that's a true what would Jesus do moment, whatever that moment may be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. I'll give I you mean, that. nowhere in the Bible does it say, and Jesus went upside his neighbor's head. So, well, who not, are we? Right. But Jesus' daddy was very wrathful. That is also it did true. say eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So, you know, it depends on, you know, what part of the Bible we're going to be talking about here. You know, Well, I mean, Old Testament, or New Testament, it doesn't matter. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. That is what he said. Um, but so, yeah, no, I mean, yes, I can see where that would be in there. But I guess when I look at the question, when I say obstacles we face at home, it's outside noise mm -hmm. you know um whether it be dealing with your children's sexuality um the communication between you and your spouse you know trying to live yo equally yoked as the bible says but you that know that is a good one that you touched on a few seconds ago dealing with your children's sexuality uh because of the world we live in kids in their mind have this thing that they want to be that you may not want them to be. Um, just throwing an example out there, you and I have not had to deal with it, but let's say person X comes home from a hard day at work and their spouse is saying that one of their children has decided that they want to change genders. That That's a hard hitter right there. Not even that. They could just say, hey, uh, such and such came out today. You know, something as simple as that. And we've said it before on this very podcast. Love the person, hate the sin. And that's one of those moments where your faith will be tested. Oh, yeah, because you don't necessarily want to force your belief on your child. But you want to help steer them in the right direction to where they can make up their own mind about whatever said subject is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's no different than what God does to us. You know, uh, it, we still have free will. You know, yes, yeah. he wants us to repent and he wants us to be saved and things like that. But I mean, we could choose to flip him off and keep it pushing i mean too so. and, and the reason why i started it off with this is because there are too many people out there that say well i can't be associated with that yes you can it's god did never say don't associate yourself with that i mean just the bible has 
many things and where you know jesus went to the to the prostitute went to uh the sick you know went to the unholy the unspiritual he actually befriended them and and was in their presence when people were shunning them yes type of thing so i mean yeah that's what yeah, he never turned his back on anyone so if we no. turn our backs on someone, we are doing the exact opposite of what God wants us to do. Correct. Now, <clears throat> keeping with that family theme and spilling into the work theme, being a leader, um, there are things that we face, things that we can do and cannot and should not do at the same time. Uh, that define our roles in leadership. There are times when we are ready to just do one thing because we don't want to be bothered with anybody, but we need to also set that example. And there are times when we don't want to do something and we need to, you know, get off our butts and do it anyway, because we need to set the example. So, yes. so being a leader and, and and also along those lines of being a leader, making the right decisions. Um, That's key. Yeah. You, you, you never want to do anything selfishly and you never want to hurt anybody purposely. Everything should be done from a standpoint of love, even your job. You know, it's easy to say that at home, but even your job, you know, a lot of people don't like their jobs, but still, Love what you do and make sure that you give it your best, no matter what it is. If you're digging ditches for a living, you dig the best darn ditches that you can because that's giving honor to God who got you that job. Your resume didn't get you that job. God got you that job. Yes. <laughs> I mean... God put the opportunity in front of you. Let's let's say that. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. God could have easily put it on the hiring manager to hire somebody else. Most so, definitely. Yeah. And, and, and that spills into taking control when needed. Um, I don't know how it was when you were growing up in the church, but they have a lot of busybody church ladies that get into everybody's business. We don't need to be like that now. Let's not take it that far. Um, it's okay to be concerned about folks, especially your own family, your close friends, but to get in the middle of everything, to try to run everything, that's not what a man or woman of faith would or should do. Now, yeah, like I said, be helpful, but don't try to dominate. I mean, yeah, but then on that aspect, Jesus didn't just go to these churches and just butt into everybody's lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't. He didn't. He did. So he basically just, the, the key, and no human walking this planet will ever be able to do this, ever, because there was only one perfect person that walked this earth. But nobody's going to be able to completely do this all in love they're not they're not they're not gonna be able to lead by example all the time oh and yeah. show definitely not we all fall short yeah we strive you know to to do that um some more than others you know i'm a very f spiritual person but not necessarily um religious fanatic type of thing like i don't live in a right. church you know what I mean? I don't go to church on Sundays. I do read the Bible. Um, you know, I do have friends, you know, in the churches that, you know, we'll, we'll get on, we'll do a zoom call, you know, and we'll sit and have a conversation, you know, that type of thing where I can ask questions and, you know, I have, uh, pastor friends and things like that, but, mm -hmm. you know, where are we at taking control when needed? Yes. Sir. Um, I'm never in control. Really? Ever. God's in control of everything. Okay. There's some things that are beyond my control that I just can't do it. And I just, I have to stress less 
not, no, I can't say I'm not going to stress about it. I just have to stress less. It's kind of like in martial arts when we're learning uh, self-defense from knife attacks, mm -hmm. you know, and we go up uh, in, in rank and we're using live blades, actual blades that will cut you. Mm. And, you know, I have geese that have slits in them and, you know, where it looks like I, I got into a fight with Wolverine or something, you know, just because of all the training, the, it, it, like, uh, since Greg once told us that, you know, you don't learn these things to not get cut. You learn these things to get cut less. And that's kind of where I am with that portion. I don't can take control. I'm never in control, but it helps me stress less. Okay. I'm still going to stress, but I stress less, but I'm, I'm never in control ever. I like the way you put that. I really do. And before I go to the next one, I like the way you put something else earlier uh, about going to church. Don't get it twisted and think that because people go to church, that they are more holier than others. I know a lot of people that just get up on Sunday just to dress up and show out. And that ain't church. Or only go once a year at Easter. Mm. You hit the nail on the head. Now, and here's the thing. It's not me to judge whether you go to church or not. Right. It, it, because I, I can't question your relationship with God, nor can you question my relationship with God. That That's a, that's a singular relationship. So, you know, I just take you as your word and, and, move, and you know what I mean? Keep going. I don't, uh, I don't a, judge. A singular and personal relationship. Yes. And, and and no matter how much we talk about it, that relationship that we have with God is still ours and no one else can or will experience it. Yes. Now, raising kids the right way. We touched on it a little bit at the beginning of, of this here. So there's not much more to say, you know, yeah, we want to set a good example. We want to show them what they should do and shouldn't do. And at the same time, um, kids make mistakes. We all have. They're going to do something wrong. It's how you handle that moment that defines your parentage. Yeah. And, but, you know, and then I'll go a step further. You could be the best parent on the face of the earth mm -hmm. and your kids would still mess up. Thank so. I'm going to go back to, I'm just going to pull, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer. Everybody knows his sins and what he did. Mm -hmm. Do we blame his parents for that? Mm -hmm. Are his parents at fault for that? Are his parents less of parents because of that? Some people say yes. Some people say no. You know, I don't think they have anything to do with the decisions that he made. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe things that growing up at a young age that they may have done differently that could have steered him in a different direction. Maybe, maybe not. But the the beauty about our relationship with God is that he gives us that free will. We have the right to choose between right and wrong. Yes. And so I, I don't ever blame parents for the way their children act. Now, if a child is acting crazy, in front of the parents and the parents do or say nothing that's mm. a little different that's a mm -hmm. little different because then i am seeing that you are allowing said behavior which then does come back to you parents out there too real quick note and this is just me i don't know if show agrees with this but um first of all the bible does have the verse spare the rod spoil the child remember Amen. that because I'm not advocating any kind of child abuse, but I am saying that sometimes a child needs a spanking, not a beating, a spanking. Know the difference. And see, but I, I take that also not necessarily as a literal statement. You know, spare the rod, spoil the child. That's easy to say. That means, yes, you have permission to spank your kid yeah. or should. I just supplement that punishment. It could yes. be whatever that punishment is. It doesn't necessarily mean physical uh, no, no, it doesn't uh, have to be physical. Uh, you could lose allowance for the week. You could right, uh, get grounded. If you, if you do nothing, you're, I mean, you really have no reason to complain. 
you know, but again, that's a, you know, each teach their own, you know, when it comes to that. Again, it's not my place to judge how you raise your child. But as oh. for me, as for me, you know, I, I strive, you know, when I was younger, you know, my oldest kid is 32, you know, Sturgeon, he's the oldest one. If he was on this conversation with us right now, he would say that I am, I take it way too easy on the youngest one because I'm a lot older. You know, unfortunately, I was learning to be a parent when we had Sturgeon, you know, so he got the gruff of me learning how to be, be the disciplinarian, you know, so, you know, obviously in his mind, you know, I beat the hell out of him growing up and all this stuff. But, you know, I think that with each one of my children, that they were all uh, raised with love. Um, mm -hmm. None of them were not spanked. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I did spank them. Now, but you know what? I, if you were harder, when I was a kid, my daddy broke a lot of paddles on my butt. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you were harder on your oldest, that is a good thing too, because you set the example. Well, yes as, and no. As, because... as the oldest, as the oldest, you know, in case anything ever happened to y'all, God forbid, but in case it did, he would have been able to step in. Because he would know what daddy would do True because, daddy. you know, but it has no bearing on my 16 year old because obviously she wasn't born when that is true. Brother, so. That is true. But I think also part of this raising the kids the right way is also being there to help them navigate the world that we live in now, you know, with just like you said, the different all the different struggles they have it being it was it was much easier when we were teenagers to be teenagers oh, in my was. personal opinion Definitely. you know they have more crap to deal with uh you know things that that are legal now that weren't legal back then or things that were frowned upon about then were not are not frowned upon about now you know we all knew gay people when we was in high school yeah it just what you know they just wasn't openly gay throwing stuff out there like they are now you know I I, I rem the, there was nobody in our high school that wanted to be a dog or a cat or a rabbit, you know, these little furry things that they, yeah. you know, identifying as. But I think part of that raising kids the right way is being able to help them navigate, answer questions, lead them to biblical answers through the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like I tell my daughter all the time, the Bible has all the answers. It's up to you to find the question. It, it really does. That, that's really what it is. Dealing with uh, those unsavory people, and it could be at work, it could be, you know, in the public, uh, it could be even friends of yours, you know, that really tests your faith, uh, because especially if they're people you either grew up with, friends of yours, etc., you've got to know when to pull away from those people. Yes, uh, agree, it's all about who you associate yourself with. Because you can't Agreed. be this upstanding person and then you go out with such and such and y'all quote unquote raise hell all weekend because now you've you, Birds you've of a compromised feather flock together, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, doesn't the Bible say if you lie down with dogs, you'll come up with fleas mm -hmm. or something of that nature? Yes, I don't sir. know if that's verbatim, but you know, that's what I've always heard being spit. You know, you can't uh it just like I said, you, you can't live a biblical or faithful or Christian or religious life, whatever that, whatever you want to label that, you can't live that and hang out with the complete opposite of what you're trying to portray. Yeah. Now, how how do you stand out without compromising your beliefs? And I want to roll that into the one previous workplace politics because the job is a good example. Uh, you could see certain people move up faster than you in this example. And you're like, what have I got to do? They may be doing some things that they really shouldn't or cutting some corners or even doing things that, you know, would be a fireable offense, but they're getting away with it. And they're becoming more successful than you who is doing the right things. How do you deal with that? I mean, the only thing you can do with the workplace politi politics is 
complain to whoever the supervisors or have a conversation with the supervisor or whoever is above you. Um, but that stuff normally plays itself out. You know, if somebody's getting ahead by doing the wrong things, eventually everything done in the dark is going to come to light. I mean, that's, that's just what's going to happen. Um, so I really don't, I really don't trip off that type of stuff. I mean, and I don't, I don't work in a, in an office anymore. So mm -hmm. it, that's a problem I don't have, but just going back to when I did, I, I never really paid that much of attention when it comes to things like that, because normally, you know, it all comes to, comes to the light, but standing out without compromising your beliefs, I think that's both in action and the spoken word, you know, um, one way I you deal know, with it, because I'm still in an office environment, I have set goals in my mind, and all I need to do is accomplish them for myself. Whatever happens, you know, as far as my beliefs, as I do these things, if they go noticed, that's a bonus. I, I don't set out to look for something to happen. And that's one way to keep yourself from A, being disappointed, and B, from, quote unquote, going to the dark side and, you know, doing the things that you know you shouldn't do just because this person did it. Don't even, don't even put that in your mind. And, you know, I, I'm sure I've missed out on a lot of opportunities because I wasn't the guy. But if that's the case, I don't want to be the guy. I agree. And, you know, with the uh, how to stand out without compromising your beliefs, that part of the question. Um, define stand out. Like, am I trying to get something or am I just not compromising my beliefs? I don't care who really notices it. I mean, what how do you know? Well, see, how that, does that? that, that how that's the thing. That? Uh, like I just said, I don't do it to get noticed. Standing out to me is a personal thing. If, if I do one, two, and three, and I accomplish those goals, to me, I've stood out, you know, in my own mind. Doesn't have to go noticed with anybody else. But what do you mean goals? Well, everybody's job is different, but everybody has something that they need to do with their job. And you want to try to be the best at it. And you want to, you know, set yourself goals. If you're in a sales job and you want to just set up a goal to, make three big sales or whatever. Uh, it, it's hard to give a good example because there's so many differences. Uh, it's just personal for you. So when you wrote these, these questions, was that strictly just a workplace scenario? Yes, it was a workplace okay. scenario, but because I, I didn't read it, I didn't read it like that. So that's why I was asking you, you can use it in a, in, I mean, a in a family scenario or a public scenario too. Like for instance, you know, mm -hmm. In the trucking field, transportation field, you know, you get a lot about a lot of them corn fed redneck white boys. And they tend to they tend to have a particular opinion about. People of color, you know, wherever mm -hmm. they say, uh, you know, the N word or whatever, you know, whenever it's in my. When I can hear it and or if they're talking to me, I squash that shit right away, you know, right. Um, I'm not going to play that, you know, Um so that's kind of what I mean when I say standing out, you know, that's kind of what I do without compromising myself, you know, and then th that's yeah, kind of what I was at the same time, with, but, you're being a leader. So that, you know, well, yeah, to a certain extent, but it's also dealing with unsavory people too, because I want to punch them in the face as soon as they do that. But, you know, going back look, to look at that, killing know, three birds with one stone. Right? There you go. All right, guys, we're going to finish up in just a minute. We'll be back after this commercial break from the past. It's a free country. If I want to give interviews, I'll give interviews. You know what your problem is? You're too modest. Hey, I give good quotes. And you can print that on the front page. Anthony Hardaway, best player in basketball, guarantees championship. Guarantee. You can't say stuff like that. Let me just tell you. All right. You. I'm an integral part of the Magic organization. Now, Penny yeah, is the team play. leader, but I'm the choreographer for the Magic Dance. Get you a job if you want. Hey, whoa, whoa, Penny, stop the call! That was Tyra Banks, boo! 
kind of what I was meaning about when I said, you know, um, compromising your beliefs, that type of thing. But it also goes to with not just um, agreeing with, uh, you know, the secular world, you know, where we should all be uh, understanding of sexual orientation, um, gender identification. Um, simple one that was a big deal last year or year before last. I think it was last year. Abortion, pro-life, pro-choice. I mean, you know, that that's a whole nother topic for you and I. Yeah, one day, I mean. But, um, I mean, but still, I, I'm not going to compromise my beliefs over it. You know what I mean? And just because I am one or the other doesn't mean I'm less spiritual or less religious or less closer to God because of it. Yeah, I mean, what, what comes to mind politically, something came up today in my job. Uh, somebody who's very pro-Trump said, oh, I can't believe they're trying to indict him. Look at all these things that Joe Biden has done. Nobody's talking about arresting him. Now, without playing my card saying which affiliation I'm for or against, I simply said, Trump did a criminal act. That's why he's being indicted. Joe Biden is stupid. That's still legal. So. True statement. Yeah. So, you know, people just get up in arms over the wrong things. And uh, we, followers of Christ, have to stay grounded and, you know, do the right things. Whatever, whatever they may be. And, and I know that I don't want to steer off of our, our topic too much, mm -hmm. but with, with that whole pro-choice, pro-life thing, I, I mean, I don't care if people know. I'm pro, I'm pro-choice. Um, it's not my body. I don't have a, a, a uterus. So in my personal opinion, I, I don't think I have the right to tell a woman what she can or can't do with her body. Uh, whether I agree with the actual act or not, it depends on the situation. Um, like, I don't think abortion should be used for birth control, but, you know, if you were attacked, sexually assaulted, molested, um, I don't think you should be forced to have that child. But that being said, I was, I, I heard something on, you know, when I was going down the YouTube rabbit hole or something the other day, and it was mm -hmm. depicting that whole point in the Bible where it says, uh, thou shalt not kill. And... If you take that literally, so when I have my biblical friends who are pro-life and they absolutely don't care what the scenario is for the young lady that was pregnant, mm -hmm. I always throw back to them, somebody kicks in your front door. They're getting ready to attack your wife. Are you not going to kill them to protect her? Are you not going to kill them to protect yourself? Because you can't have one without the other. In my mindset. Yeah. Whoever comes in my house, they not making it out on their own. And that's exactly. just where I'm going to leave it. But the guy that was on here said the actual literal, literal translation from the original text, it says thou shalt not murder. Murder and kill are two different things. Absolutely. So just something to digest on, you know, that's part of the problem with religion is how we um, interpret what the Bible says. Yeah, and, a lot of it is people wanting to bend the Bible to the way they want it to be seen. Yes. Not just that passage, but I've heard many passages that are either misquoted or they've taken the quote way out of context. I mean, look at all those cults that have been out there that use the Bible as a base point to get followers, you know, mm. and have multiple wives and things like that, or even slavery. And, you know, because, you know, the Jews and it was okay to have slaves back then in the Old Testament. So supposedly, um, but I don't know. That's the, that's the one problem we're always going to have is interpretation and bending it to fit whatever narrative you're trying to come across. That is true. Now, 
you talked about speaking with people um, that know the Bible very well. When it comes to people that don't, how do you approach others regarding your faith? Have you ever had an opportunity to just tell somebody about Jesus or it, and if you did, how did that come about? And if it hasn't, and you think that one day it might, how do you wish to handle it? Um, yes, I've had opportunities uh, to share my belief. Um, but normally the conversation just grows organically. Like I'm not going next door, knocking on the door going, do you believe in Jesus? You know, I'm not doing any of that. You know, normally it's, and, and, and normally most of these conversations are with my children. Um, you know, Hey dad, why do you feel this way? You know, I read this in the Bible and this is how I see it. Why do you see it differently? That type of thing. Um, yeah. We're mostly, you know, I'm not out there Bible thumping, you know, trying to get disciples as the Bible says you should. Um, but that's just not what I do. I, I'm I'm not like that. Like my, my sister, uh, who I'm very close with, she's not religious, but she's very spiritual. Like she doesn't necessarily believe in heaven or hell or God or the devil, but she knows there's a, there's a force bigger than us. If that makes sense. Yes. I'm not, I'm not constantly thumping on her going, no, sis, you got to believe X, Y, Z, because to me, the message is the same. Who cares who the messenger is? The question is, did you get the freaking message? You hit the nail right on the head too, because, uh, a lot of times I've found that the more you try to force something on someone, the more they are going to move away from that, especially when we're talking about our kids. Oh yeah. yeah I mean, tell them the stove is hot. They're going to touch it because they don't believe you. Exactly. Now finishing it up here. Um, in closing, considering your, your country, our country, the current state of your, <laughs> your country, <laughs> just my country. <laughs> what would this you say? Ryanville. Yeah. What would it's you say to the people out there in Ryanville um, who are listening in order for everyone to finally see the light and come together? Well, for everybody in Ryanville, I need you to send me 1995 and I'll show you how <laughs> to get closer to Jesus. Uh, no. Um, you know, when I look at this question, it just kind of reminds me of, of of a story that that I once heard, you know, about why we as Christians or Christ believers, faith driven people um, shouldn't listen to the surrounding people in the secular world when it comes to making big decisions. And the best example biblically for me um, was Barabbas and Jesus. And just quick, the quick story, Barabbas and Jesus were on trial. And the king at that time asked the crowd who should be crucified. Jesus, who was doing nothing but, you know, trying to spread the word, the gospel, or Barabbas, who was a killer, whoremonger, you know, the evilest of evil. And the crowd chose Jesus. So to me, that's kind of like not, you know, be sure not to follow what the crowd is saying. Do just because everybody says, let's do this. That doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's the right thing to do. Make that personal choice. Make sure that that's what you feel is right uh, before doing it. And for the country in general, we just, we just need to get closer to God we just whatever that is in your life you need to get closer to it and and try to uh live w like a horse with blinders on don't get distracted by the secular world and it's very easy to do pornographic material is right at your fingertips you know anybody can do that it's not like it was when we was young when we had to sneak 
you know, the magazines out of the gas station and things like that. I mean, it's so prevalent. And I know I ain't the only one that did, did it. So don't even pretend. Don't even look at me like that, Rick. Like you didn't do it either. <laughs> I, I know I'm not the only one on here that did that. But, you know, just everything that that the the sins of the flesh that the Bible says is just so easily to, to get nowadays. It's right at our fingertips. Um, You know, and prayer. Put prayer back in whether it be, you know, back in school, uh, back in your home life, you know. Um, but this I, world's destined to get worse before it gets better. The Bible says so. That's true. I will say this, and it's kind of a dual message. The first part is to the believers. If you believe in God, you're already on the right track. You just have to concentrate on doing things and living in a less secular way and more of a biblical way. And we already said it a couple times on this podcast. You're going to fail. You're not going to get it right 100% of the time. You're not even going to get it right 60, 50% of the time. That's okay. God isn't asking you to be 100% perfect. He says to be Christ-like. He didn't say turn into Jesus. He says be Christ-like. So if you keep failing, but you keep getting back up and trying again, that's what he wants. That's what you should strive for. For the person who doesn't believe in God, ask yourself this. How are you here? How is everything made? No, I don't mean your mommy made you. I don't mean mommy and daddy. How did they come? And then the people before them. We all come from a starting point. There is a starting point. There is no chicken and the egg here. Things, people didn't just happen. Things literally had to be created. And if things had to be created, there is a creator. And that's at the very, very epicenter of starting your faith in God. Not going to tell you what religion to follow. That's a whole nother thing. Not going to tell you how to follow it. The first thing you got to do is believe and you know for the atheists out there who don't believe ask yourself this if you don't believe in god you have to ask yourself why because again things don't just happen and you know also here on the other thing that part of my mindset is you know i would much rather believe in jesus and god and not need him then need him and not and not him. have him. Mm. What do you have to lose? And for those of you that are watching that like don't know what scriptures to look at, a couple of scriptures that you can read that will lead you on the path to salvation, uh, you know, is uh Acts chapter four, verse twelve. I won't read it, I'll let you do the own research. Matthew uh Chapter 7, verse 21. Just little things. Matthew 8. I mean, Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 through 22. Those are some things that you can look at just to help you on, put you on the right path of understanding. Um, and I'll pray for you. I, I pray for everybody on this podcast uh, that you do uh, get introduced to Jesus and start a relationship with him. I'm not asking you to 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 turn you know biblical overnight but that you uh, initiate a one a, one more uh, thing Cheryl, because you when you mention acts for the people that think it's too late it's not too late acts if i'm correct was written by paul who was very wicked and he turned it around so yes you know and, and he said if he could do it anybody can he's not wrong it, John 14, chapter 6. I don't know if I said that too, but that's that's simply basis, and I'm going to read it. It says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's Jesus talking back. So it, it, there it is in a nutshell. You want to get to heaven? That's the way, through Jesus. There is no other gate. There is no other door. He is the only way. And like Big Show said, what have you got to lose? That's right. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. 
you know um yeah i mean i i could sit and talk about this for another hour so hey but, you guys if, if you you want us to talk more about faith religion uh, anything in that nature leave us a message uh if you're on youtube uh watching the podcast comment there if you want to send us a uh message via email you can email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com can't get that wrong it's the name of the podcast and we're at yahoo.com that's right we we take on any kind of questions be careful now we might give you the any answer type on of the criticism air. any time of criticism yeah we'll take that as well and again uh you know i i, I don't want to I, I pray that everyone watching this if you're if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that you will begin one. Um, but I love you regardless of whatever your decision is. That is true. I like that. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us this week, but we're gonna come back next week, whether you guys like it or not. Yes. Because that's what good Lord do. willing. Yeah, Lord willing. <laughs> Show take us on out of here. Thank you guys for coming or for watching. I say coming out like just seeing us live, but uh, hey, appreciate which we might one day do a live show. We might do a live one. That would be awesome to get live feedback. But uh, you know, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, we love the fact that you guys come and see us every week. Remember, tomorrow is not promised. Love your loved ones. Tell them you love them. So true. Week. You guys take care. 